This is Kevin Ring with Nationwide Video. Today I'm going to show you a very basic setup with the Spider X80 using Christie's Spider Studio. When you first launch Spider Studio for the first time, or if you go to File, New, it brings you up to the Configuration Manager. Here is where you can start with a new empty configuration or load and alter a current configuration. Start with new. And I'm not connected to a live system, but we do give you a virtual frame right off the bat. If you want to change your number, your inputs and outputs, right now I'm at 2416, but you can change that if you'd like. Here we can change our frame rate. We, of course, do a hard 60, NTSC, PAL, 2997, et cetera, et cetera. Basically what you want to run your show at. The default's 12-bit, uh, which will also be 10-bit but we can also run it at 8-bit. When we're at 8-bit, we get 80 million pixels, and when we're at 12-bit, we get 55 million pixels, or megapixels. I'll run mine at 8-bit. Stereo mode is for 3D. That does require a different license. Uh, I would assume in a live event, you're probably not using it. Uh, then here, number three, we have the ability to enable or disable a preview canvas or preview screen. What's really cool is this does not affect our overall canvas. So with the preview enabled, you still have 80 megapixels to play with, which is absolutely mind-blowing. So I will enable a preview. Now I can hit next. So the way that Spider works is we give you a large canvas of pixels. It's then up to you to slice and dice the pixel space uh, per your screens. You can change your overall canvas in the upper right hand corner oops with the edit canvas button and now i'm altering my canvas notice the max width and height are tied together so if i were to go to 16384 and start exceeding it right now the max with my current height of 4320 is 18048 however if i were to decrease my overall canvas height, I can now go higher. You are able to alter the canvas at a later point in time. So as you start slicing up your screens and you determine you might need more height, uh, you can do that. Uh, it is recommended for your op monitor to you know, not, not go crazy. Of course, you could easily just make it the biggest canvas you want. But when you build your op monitor, uh, the canvas space will take up negative space on there so if you want to see all your sources and screens up close try to be as concise as possible uh, just for demonstration purposes though let me do 5000 by oh actually let's do 7680 and i'll do that by 4320 but once again i can always change it now i hit add canvas and now i can start adding pixel spaces by default it's going to make it 1920 1080 but i can change that to be whatever i want this is a full 4K system, so I can add that here. If I hit the plus button, it instantly creates another pixel space for me. I can make this 30, 40, 2160 as well. And now note, there's no more pixel space to the right. So what happens now if I add another pixel space? Well, it's going to use the appropriate pixel space underneath here. So it now shifts it underneath. So now I do 30, 40. Perfect. And I hit uh, one more. So here I can easily fit four 4K canvases. Or excuse me, 4K pixel spaces. Great. If I want to name these as well, I can do so. So I can call this left projector, right projector, DSMA, DSMB. Now, of course, you can arrange this however you'd like. I hit next, and now I can actually start applying physical output connectors on my spider system towards my pixel space. You have the ability to change the output resolution on each output, but if you know you're going to be using one resolution over and over, you can change the default resolution. So I'll change mine to UHD 3040, 2160, 5994. Now as I add an output, 
it adds it to the pixel space at the right resolution. With the output selected, the properties tab now shows me what the output properties are. So here I can change the connector type, HDMI, DisplayPort, or 12G SDI, and I could load a standard EDID or resolution. I can of course change the chroma subsampling, the uh, high dynamic range, and of course the bit depth. So at this point now, I could manually line it up, line up the output based off the pixel space of left projector. But what I can also do is we have what's called a reference object. So if I reference this output towards the left projector of pixel space, I can now snap it into place. Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> so let me check in output number two. I'll go to right projector, snap it, and snap it. I'll do output number three to DSMA, snap it, and snap it. Now, here's where we are going to change up a little bit. The way that we do op monitors and source monitors on Spider is we use the fourth output of any output card. So on this system, I have four output cards. So I could do four op monitors, four source monitors, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I might only need one, I might only need two, but for right now, I'm going to avoid using output number four because I want to reserve that to be an op mon or source mon. So I'm going to skip that and go to output number five. I'll have this be DSMB, snap, snap, good to go. If I want to while I'm here, I can go to output number four, and now I can set this to be a multi-viewer. So I go to mode, change from normal to multi-viewer, and now I'm going to be good to go. I apologize for my emails. That was Turbo Squid, so that's a new 3D object, so that's going to be really fun to play with. I'm going to hit next, and now if I want to, I can clear pre-existing data. Um, old edids, old command keys, play items, may as well. And if I want to add an external router, I could do it here. Good news is I can always do it later. We hit next, and now I can apply this to my local system or to a live system. Great. So now I have my simulated program here. So even on a live system, we call it the simulator, where you're going to show your uh, graphical user interface with all your programming. So don't get the terminology confused. Even on a live system, it's still the simulator tab. So on the left-hand side, we'll have all of our sources and treatments. But note, if you're not seeing everything, that's pretty common because you can customize this layout completely. So let me first go to Restore Factory Layout, and that's how it defaults. But if I'm not seeing anything, I go to the View tab, and I can add sources. I could add my multi-viewer setup and everything else. So looking at the pixel space, the way that we divide it by default in Spider is we show all pixel spaces. But I can also have it show my pick my view stack, where it now breaks it up into each individual pixel space for me. Most live event folks tend to like that. Looks like I'm also missing a page here of my command keys. So let's go to command keys, and here it is. Great. This is what it really should look like. So I have all my sources here on the left-hand side. So if I want to add a source, for example, I can right-click and hit Add New Source. Then over here on the right-hand side on the properties, I can configure what I want my source to be. We'll just call it um, well, Graphics 1. I can set the input type to be Auto, where it's going to now ping for the electrical pulsation, or I can set it to be a specific input connector. Um, I don't have a router, so I'm using Spider's internal input, and I say what input number. And now the input configuration. Each input must have an input configuration that tells it what the refresh rate is, the resolution is, all that good stuff. So if you have multiple sources, say 19, 20, 10, 80, you can use the same input configuration for all of those, or copy it, or link it. Otherwise, you can always create and configure a new input. So now it's going to configure. And here we go. So I'm now on the configuration page of this input. Right now it defaults to 1280 by 1024 because it's not receiving a valid EDID. It doesn't know what it wants to be. But if I want to change that, I can load a standard EDID and then go down to HD at 5994. Double click. And now note, every time I make any change on Spider, I got to hit save, 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 save. 
So now at this point, this input is set to 1920, 1080. I can now bring this into my preview bus. I can expand it manually. Or of course, I can do these hotkeys up here. I can apply a thumbnail to the source if I want to. I don't have any at the moment, or I could of course capture one from the live source. But at this point now, I have the ability to show the content on screen. The way that we're going to then do that in Spider, you know, let me just go ahead and stretch this. Beautiful. Is I'm going to use what's called a command key. So a command key is you commanding the system to do something. If I right click my command key, I'm going to add from preview and we'll call this graphics one. Now, would you have it actually span all four pixel spaces? No, probably not. But hey, I can do it. And now I have the ability to set this to preview or program. So I can now send this source there. If I select the source and delete it, I can pull it from preview. And now if I add from preview, I can call this clear all. This is now my clear all command key. If I hit that, that's going to clear. Oh, sorry about that. It's going to clear everything. I have my settings set to a relative preset, but that should have been a absolute. But we'll talk about that later. So at the very least, I can now take a source, drag it into Spider, have it fill a specific screen or screens. And then create an absolute command key. Graphics one all. That takes us to preview, takes us to program. So the very, very basic sense, this allows me now to get sources going to Spider. Uh, I'll make another video in the future that then elaborates on what an absolute command key is versus a relative command key. Um, then we'll, of course, talk about the script editor down here uh, with the really nifty things you can do from that. But from the absolute basic standpoint of an intro configuration into Spider, this should at least get you running with uh, your sources, your outputs. Uh, you can right click here now and send, um, I'm sorry, you can, you can click on each layer and you can send a test pattern at this point uh, and you can verify that everything's working. Make sure your projectionists, your LED engineers, your video assists have tasks that they need and then you can always sit at your spider backstage, uh, work and uh, program the rest of the show. So once again, Kevin from Nationwide. Thank you so much.